Hello there. I'm Funky Monkey, and welcome to another edition of Funky Monkey at the Movies. With me as ever is my nameless producer. Hello. And tonight, we've been to see Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. It's based off of a French comic book, don't you know? So I don't know whether or not it qualifies for the ladder. No, probably not. So it's going to be a rating. Yeah. But first, let's get to our thoughts about it. And, well, the main thing that struck me as I was sitting there, I was looking at the performances, and they just really seemed rather flat on one note from the leads. There really wasn't much chemistry. I'm just going to come out and say it. Dane DeHaan does not seem very much like what I imagined this Valerian to be from what I'd seen of him from researching before the movie. Yes, I actually did research coming into this. I see. Maybe you can share that research with us in a little while. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, Dane DeHaan, who played Valerian, he really doesn't have very much in the way of heft. And, dare I say it, he looks rather gooberish, if that's even a thing. You know? He doesn't seem... No, he's not somebody I'd pick for a romantic lead or an action hero. He looks too short and too kind of ordinary. I, kind of, I could imagine him playing, like, a creepy sidekick or some kind of villain, but not the main character. And he seems to lack... Screen presence and charisma. Yeah. I mean, a role like this demands a Ryan Reynolds, for example, or someone of that ilk. No? I mean, if you'd gone with maybe the 1980s, I would have suggested a Kurt Russell. Maybe. Maybe a Kurt Russell. Or maybe, uh, dare I say, a Bruce Willis. But maybe I'm just comparing it too much to the fifth element. Well, you see, that's it. We all have seen, well, we both have seen the fifth element. And, yes, I did uh, review the fifth element for the House of Love. Check that out online. Probably be a link below. But this isn't the fifth element all over again. I mean, one of the creators of Valerian was saying to Luc Besson while he was making the fifth element, that he should be making Valerian instead. But he didn't feel up to it at the time. But he certainly feels up to it now, which is why we've gone to see it. And again, I don't know that Cara Delevingne, much as I don't really, as much as I don't at all know the character of Laureline, I don't know that she fit either. Really, I think the leads were miscast. Yeah. I mean, the only one that really had any kind of, or showed any kind of real acting, was Clive Owen. Surprisingly, I thought Rihanna was fairly good as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in another um, comparison with the fifth element, she was very much the, dare I open this Pandora's box, the token black character. I don't <laughs> think so, because she was an alien. Although she did bring very much needed levity, as yeah. the uh, character. And I thought it was kind of a shame when she got killed off. Could yeah. Have more with her and fucked out her parts and things. But uh, let's talk about some of the good parts. I mean, um, visually, it was quite stunning, really. Oh, it was visually sumptuous. Definitely. I mean, some of the aliens looked a bit stupid, but they were still interesting. I mean, those Varungians or whatever they were. Yeah, they were a bit stupid looking, but they were still quite well done. And I mean, there was a, quite a lot of action in the um, in the first half where they did like their first mission and things to get you kind of acquainted into it. But overall, as well, I think it was a bit too long the whole film, considering you know how little story there was. You know, you could have cut out half an hour and it still would have um, been the same story. I don't think a lot was added into it. Maybe in places it was kind of episodic. Yeah, I mean, I was kind of a bit disappointed it turned out to be that giant space station, because 
Um, when they said it's a city of a thousand planets, I thought it was going to be something really high tech, sci fi, and actually have a thousand planets in it. No. 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 Yeah, you know, it'll be some kind of um, crazy Kardashev 2 or 3 civilization that was harvesting planets and keeping them together in some mega space station. Well, it was quite the large space station. Yeah, it was pretty large. But, you know, there wasn't actually a thousand planets in it. I mean, when they were there saying there's like 30 million people on there, that's only like three Swedens. Well, it's only like half of England. Yeah, exactly. Less than half by the latest census. But, um, you know, I haven't watched a lot of Luc Besson films, but obviously, um, The Fifth Element was one of my favourites. But, uh, it wasn't as, like you said, the directing was a little bit flat. I think I agree with that, because in The Fifth Element, it was like very tightly cut, and there was a lot of, uh, scene chops and Cross cutting, smart into cross cutting. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of that, but there was none of that in uh, Valerian. No, no. I mean, for example, the scene in The Fifth Element with uh, one of the Zorg's henchmen on the phone to Zorg after he failed to get on board the spaceship to Flost in Paradise. Yeah, that was intercut with uh, a scene of Ruby Rod seducing one of the uh, flight stewardesses. Well, yeah, there was lots of cutting there, and, um, I mean, but, yeah, if, if you've seen The Fifth Element, there was a lot of that kind of thing. It had a playfulness about it that this movie, well, kind of doesn't have. Yeah, I guess it being based on an existing uh, franchise, though, we kind of need to know more about the franchise, so I don't know if I'm unfairly judging it or not. Well, yeah. For all that we are coming into this one as neophytes, this movie actually wants, well, actually gets me to want to know more about these characters, about this world, this universe, about the whole franchise of Valerian and Loraline. I mean, from my research, I had found out that in the comics, the character of Loraline was supposed to be a, a medieval peasant girl that had been picked up and thrust into the future to become Laureline's sidekick. Uh, to become Valerian's sidekick. That'd be weird if you were your own sidekick. Interesting, that would give things a different turn. And I mean, that's not something that happened in that, because she said she was uh, not Harvard educated, but I'm sure... Ivy League educated. Ivy League educated, yeah. And again, my research. I mean, the uh, images of... Valerian I got, he was very much sort of the, the prototypical, stereotypical even, square-jawed, chiseled, hero-looking fella. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how tall that the actor playing him is, but... Dane DeHaan? Yeah. I and he did of, look rather short. Yeah, I did get this kind of short vibe from him. I mean, Clive Owen was taller than him. But one last thing that I did want to bring up, the uh, score, the music. Uh-huh. I mean, again, comparing to The Fifth Element, again, it was a, it was a very whimsical score for The Fifth Element. This yeah. one, really not so much. No, but it was okay. I wouldn't have said it was terrible. It just doesn't... I guess we're guilty of thinking... Uh, Luke Besson, sci-fi film, and then comparing it to The Fifth Element. Yeah, yeah. It is a trap that we've rather fallen into. But at times, there was at least one moment where I was reminded of John Williams. And yeah. having listened to a lot of John Williams lately, he does seem to have a style. All his own. Yeah, um, musicians tend to. Yeah, yeah. All right then. So, uh, I think it's about that time where we give our final thoughts and the rating. Okay. Visually stunning, direction average, poor casting on the main characters, some of the backup characters were a little bit better, a little bit too long for what little story there was. Good action though, 
I think I'm going to give it about a six. Okay. Yeah, so, rather flat direction, poor lead casting choices, visually sumptuous, and uh, at least the story kept me invested. So there's that. And it did genuinely, did genuinely make me want to know more about these characters. But even with all that, it's rather average, and I'd give it about a 5 out of 10. Right. Okay, so, this has been Funky Monkey and His Nameless Producer. Links for the e-begging and social media followings are down below. Don't forget to visit us at minds.com. That'll be linked. Yeah. Okay, and uh, as the last 20 seconds are coming up, you should see at least one or two links to a uh, Patreon and my YouTube channel. So, yeah. Funky Monkey and his nameless producer signing off, and we'll see you at the movies. Bye.